Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. In the previous video, I explained how we can uh, generate a super continuum of frequencies using a high power pulse and an effect called self phase modulation. So go check that out for the whole calculation I showed there. But essentially the idea is that if you have a very high power pulse and also a, an optical fiber with a very strong nonlinearity, then we get a phase modulation that depends on the power of the pulse locally. And because the power of the pulse changes locally, then we get a change in the phase over time, which is equivalent to a change in the frequency. And that's why we can take a very narrow pulse coming, coming in, in the time domain, which has a certain spectral width, and then that's going to be broadened out to potentially span all the way into the visible range. But I thought it'd be nice to show sort of in a more continuous way how we can generate these uh, very wide, wide spectra. So I've set up a little experiment that contains a high power pulse source. These pulses are around, I think around 10 picoseconds and with a peak power of I believe it's around 200 watts if you tune it all the way up. So that's extremely high peak power, very intense pulses, very short. So it's going to have a very huge, huge slope here. We're going to send this into a variable optical attenuator. So that way we can first make the pulse power very low and then gradually decrease the generation, make the pulse power higher, and then see how the spectrum changes at the output of a fiber with a very high nonlinearity. So if you look at the beginning of the, the fiber, we should see just a uh, spectral shape here that just depends on the shape of the pulse. But after we send that through the, the medium, we should see that being broadened out more and more and more as we lower the generation when we look at the OSA. Okay, so let's go take a look at that. Okay, so up here, we see the variable attenuator that is receiving high power pulses from this um, device right over here. And as you can see right now, that power is being attenuated by 30 decibels. And I can actually adjust that a bit more. So if I increase this by three, then we drop the, or rather I set it to another negative three decibels, then we cut the power in half. So if we press enter now, you should be able to see the purple trace, the trace down here change a little bit. So the yellow trace, that is the uh, pulse spectrum before the, um, the fiber spool up here, that's the nonlinear medium. So that's sort of our, our reference. And then the purple one is what we see at the output of the, um, of the medium. So now I'm going to reduce the attenuation and we should be able to see that this um, Purple trace initially just increases in power, so let me try and decrease it to 27 here, or negative 27. So now we should be able to see that, yes. So the, you can see the purple trace actually goes up a little bit more, but otherwise its shape compared to the yellow one seems to be pretty much preserved. So right now we still don't have enough power to really generate a lot of cell phase modulation, but let's see what happens if I decrease the generation a bit more and therefore increase the pulse power. So I'm going to do this in steps of 3 decibels. So every time I do this, the power is going to double. So now we're at 24, then we set it to 21, let's see what happens. So now we can maybe see something starting to happen right here. So this is indicating to us that the peak power and therefore the, the slope of the, the power slope of the pulse is large enough for significant self phase modulation to occur and therefore for the spectrum to increase in width. So now we're at negative 18, I think I can still do, let's say, let me lower it by two decimals now to negative 16. Yeah, now you can really see that the pulse is starting, or the spectrum is starting to, to broaden. So, that was just a quick demonstration of um, self-phase modulation. Stay tuned for more videos.